Major funding for this program was supplied by the National Science Foundation. I'm so glad I finally got a chance to see you. Oh, me too, Aunt Gabriella. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Did you get those off the tree? <laughs> yeah. Florida oranges. Nothing like them. <laughs> Especially when you learn how to peel them. Who's that? I don't know. Good morning. Nathan? Ellie. Oh. Oh, it's been so long. Come on, let me introduce you. Oh, you don't have to. Tia Gabriella told me all about your new tutoring job. Beyond zero, right? Yeah. yeah. Everybody, this is Nathan. He's a very old friend of mine. This is Frankie, Donnie, Bianca, Robert, Jill. You know that one. <laughs> We're taking a break in between gigs. I figured after playing 10 cities in 10 days, we could use it. Couldn't pick a better place. Hey, can you stay a while? We've got so much catching up to do. I'd love to, but I just came by to bring Tia up to date in our bird counting project. I have to be back at the tribal office soon. Oh. Nathan is a member of the Council of the Mikosuki tribe. So, what kind of birds are you counting? Uh, some of the endangered species that live around here. Uh, the wood stork, and the spoonbill, and the snail kite. But why are you counting them? To stop the building. What kind of building? Uh, years ago, all this land was approved for development. But nothing ever happened. Now, a contractor wants to start a major building project here. Now, we're trying to persuade the state that endangered birds live here and shouldn't be disturbed. So, when is the Water Authority hearing? Friday. Friday? That's only four days away. I guess we're going to have to do an air survey then. I checked into that. It's too expensive. We're going to have to count them from the ground. But isn't that a lot of ground to cover in such a short time? Not really. I think if we do a sample, we can get all the information that we need. What do you mean? Well, I could show you if you'd like. Okay, this is the land where the contractor wants to build. It's four square miles. But it'll be easier to understand the plan if you look at just one square mile. Now, a team with a good pair of binoculars can see and identify birds up to a tenth of a mile in each direction. A tenth of a mile? That's less than two football fields. I'm sure I can see that far with a pair of binoculars. Exactly. Particularly since the birds we're looking for are very distinctive. Now, we divided the four square miles into 25 counting stations each. Wait a minute. 25 stations in one square mile? That's 100 stations in all. That'll take forever to count. But you're not going to do them all, right? You're just going to do a sample. Right. We selected 20 stations at random throughout the four square miles. We'll be stationing teams at each one of them. Well, why at random? Well, we wanted to be sure that no one could say that we only counted where we thought the birds would be. You know, accuse us of getting biased information. <laughs> so you just threw darts? <laughs> <laughs> no. We put little pieces of paper with numbers from 1 to 100 into a bowl. We mixed them up and my little nephew drew 20 of them, and we came up with this. Okay, so you're counting 20 out of 100 stations. That's 20%. Sounds like you're all set. Not quite. We still have two problems, time and people. 
We need to count each station twice. Twice? <laughs> yes. Well, we'd like to do more than that. The more times you count, the more accurate the information you get. But we just don't have the time. And we still need volunteers to do that much. So far, I have seven teams with two people each, but we have to have ten teams. Well, you can count us in. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. There you go. Great. Thanks. Well, okay, then. Uh, someone needs to be in the office to tabulate the reports when they come in. Working doors? I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to get back out there with the gators? <laughs> gators? Everglades is really just a big swamp? Well, that's what a lot of people think, but they're wrong. The Everglades isn't a swamp at all. It's actually a huge, shallow river. They call it the River of Grass. There's no other place like it on Earth. Do you, um, do you think there are any gators around here? <laughs> no, not around here. They got two million acres to deal with. If the gators want to get comfortable, there's plenty of other places they can go. Two million acres. It's bigger than some states. <laughs> OK, this one's your station, number 15. Now just stand close to the marker and watch for birds around you. Now these are the three types of birds we'll be looking for. If you see one, mark it on your counting sheet here. I don't know, man. I mean, don't worry. I'll do just fine. Just take a few minutes to study the pictures. Oh, here. Stay on channel three and call in if you have any problems. We'll be back about 10 o'clock to pick you up. That's it? Just a couple of hours? No, we'll take a break during the hottest part of the day. And when the birds come back for feeding late in the afternoon, we'll come back around four to put you at another station. OK, then are you sure there are not going to be any gators, right? <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> You know, I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't come home to this place anymore. I know. Visitors only come and see the alligators, but there's so much more. And the mangrove islands, and fields of sawgrass, the smell of cypress in the air. Do you remember the time we found that little panther cult? Oh, jeez. Oh, and we took him home? <laughs> My mother almost died. She knew his mother was going to come looking for him. <laughs> hmm. We never see any panthers anymore. You know, I remember sitting right in this spot during sunset and just watching the birds rise up out of the grass. Oh, there were so many of them. They almost blocked out the sun. That's why we got to fight to keep the land the way it is. I'm glad we could help. something I want to show you. What's up? Okay. All right. This is what we've been working on. We took all the bird counting sheets and added up all the sightings we saw for each kind of bird. That's this information right here. Like with wood storks, we got 72 total. Then we divided by two since we counted each station twice. That gave us this number. Drum roll, please. Oh. Ta-da! Oh. 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 
Very I'm great. impressed. So that's what you've been doing the whole time we were out in the sun. <laughs> anyway, that's this number right here. 36 wood storks. That's the average number of wood storks that we saw. That doesn't sound like a lot. I must have seen 90 snowy egrets in half an hour. You're right, that's not a lot. But that's why we're counting. You see, there used to be thousands of birds here. Now, what's important here is the blue line, the projected population. It looks like there's close to 200 wood storks there. Yeah, 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 I get it. See, we counted at 20% of the station. Oh, so our 36 wood storks are just 20% of the population that might live there. 30 times 5 is 150. 6 times 5 is 30. 180 wood storks. Right. There may be as many as 180. What do you mean, maybe? No, that's right. I mean, after all, we couldn't count them all. We did a sample. But that's better than just a guess. And we sampled 20% of the stations. And we also built in some safeguards, like counting twice to make up for any mistakes. I think we've done a great job. Oh, but who knows what the Water Authority will do. True. Mm. We'll find out soon enough. Come with me to the hearing tier, Gabriella. Ellie will go with you. Si, como no? You couldn't keep me away. Probably not ever. <laughs> uh. So, how'd everybody like dinner? Great. Great. Mm. <laughs> this chili is good. I made it myself. It's guayaba. It's guava jelly. Dee and I used to make it all the time when I came here as a kid. I made some for you to take home with you. Oh, how sweet. What a nice remembrance of home. I hope I get to come back more often. I hope so, too. The land, it will always welcome you back. Numbers for 